QuickBooks Online 2023 QuickBooks Payment Links. Get ready to earn the skills to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top, switching the view down below, duplicating some tabs to put our financial statement reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top to do so, duplicate that is. Right click in the duplicated tab to do so again, duplicate that is. Tapping to the left as the one to the right is thinking reports on the left hand side we want to open up the balance sheet as it's thinking tabbing to the right reports on the left this time the profit and the loss the p and the l the income statement closing the hamburger just double check in the range up top from a 10123 tab 123123 tab and run it let's tab to the left Close up the hamburger, same range up top. The range, it needs to be the same. 010123, tap 123123, and run it to refresh it. That's the setup process that we do every time. Back to the tab to the left, we turned on our QuickBooks payments. We did so by going to the cog up top, settings, and then going to the payments, setting up our payments, which allows us when we have a new item up top we typically think of the payments being connected to the invoices because it gives us those nice payment options allowing a customer to be selecting these payment options the ones that they prefer although the downside being the fees related to the payment options now we might have a situation where we want to send like a link to them because uh, a link could be useful. To, we don't even have to give an, an email to their email. We might send it to their phone or something like that, or you know, give them the link in some other way, shape, or form. Now we saw when you made an invoice that there's a way to get a link. So if I was to make an invoice, for example, for a lamp low, we're gonna say, let's say we had an invoice for like 0.74 cents. <laughs> we're gonna say, and then if I hit the the drop down here, I can share the link. So this is one way that you can get a link, send your customer a link to their invoice. This will then give them a link you know, to an actual invoice as opposed to the other link format we can make, which will basically make like a sales receipt type of form. So you can skip the clutter of inbox and share an invoice link. Instead, your customer can download, print, or pay it in an instant. Mui B to the end. I'm gonna close that out. That's one way you can do it. You can copy the link down here and put that where you want to put it. But the invoice note is gonna make an increase to the accounts receivable. What if you wanna skip that altogether? You just wanna have a link that's gonna be a sales receipt. So in other words, if I close this out and I look at my little forms over here, you'll recall that this is the flow chart from the, from the desktop view uh, version, but I'm just looking at the flow chart, which is basically the same for pretty much all accounting systems and whatnot. So if you had this, the sales cycle, the most simplified sales cycle you'll remember is if you had gig work. If you had gig work or something and you were just getting paid by like YouTube and they just deposit money into your account every once in a while, then when it comes through with the bank feeds, you might just record the bank deposit as revenue and you don't have to send out an invoice or a sales receipt typically, right? But if you're in a situation where you have to send them an invoice doing the work first, like a bookkeeper or a lawyer or many different kind of service companies, then you're gonna make the invoice and send it to them by email oftentimes these days, which we looked at in a prior presentation, or you might have a situation where you do work at the same time. Classically, you would think of this as like a cash register situation where you're in a store and someone comes up and wants to pay, wants the payment at that point in time. So in this case, we don't have to deal with accounts receivable 
but it's not quite as easy as them just automatically paying us like a payment platform like YouTube, just depositing money into the bank accounts. We still have to facilitate the transaction with, with, with a sales receipt. So one way we can, we can do this with our payment system here is we could, we, we could have options where we have the automated, you know, payment processing systems, like a cash register type of situations with apps on the phones and that kind of stuff, which we might look at later, but we also might want to send just a, a payment link as a, an easy form of payment in some cases. And, uh, and then we can even text the link and this will create instead of an invoice, a sales receipt, skipping the accounts receivable process in it. All right. So how would that happen? We can, we can go into there. One way to get there is we can go to the sales on the left-hand side, which is usually where our customers are at and then go to the payment links. So the payment links, if you haven't set any up before, it says get paid easily anywhere, anytime with payment links. No time, no problem. Share a payment link, sit back and let your customers send you money. So it's not usually that, yeah, that easy to sit back and let them, you have to give them something usually for them to send you money. It's not just like you give them a link and that's it. But in any case, number one, create a unique link. Answer a few questions to create a link that lets customers pay you. Number two, share it with your customers. Copy your link to send in an email or text. You can also display it or uh, it as a QR code for in-person payment. So if you want people to pay you with like this QR code to scan the QR code, then you can make your payment link into that format, which again, is kind of similar to a point of process kind of system where they're paying you like kind of like at a cash register situation. Get paid. Number three, your payment is automatically recorded in QuickBooks as a sales receipt. Instead of an invoice, we have a sales receipt. Now a quick note here. Remember when I go into my invoice up top, you've got your payment options on the left, right? But, and this that's in the new view, the other view will look different, but you'll still have your payment options. When I go into the sales receipt form, which is usually the one on a cash based system, we don't really have the payment options. We have to manually kind of enter, enter the form if I go directly into this form. But if I use the sales receipt thing, it's gonna create the sales receipt form with basically the you know the the link that we're creating all right so let's check that out so i'm going to close this out and let's create a link let's do it so select a payment link that meets your needs so we've got the first one one-time payment link works once with one customer and will expire after being used uh you can you can watch their video on it tip used to get paid for a single product service from one customer best for a customer you're only selling to once so if we have a one-time sale to a particular customer, it's basically a point of sale. We expect them to pay us very soon. We don't need to send them an invoice because we're not giving them 30 days to pay us or a longer payment time. They're gonna pay us here and now. Then we can put the payment link, which allows them to have that one-time use. And then the payment link has been used after that point. We don't have to worry about it after that time. Then we've got the multi-use payment link works with multiple customers and can be used multiple times. Tip, I uh, used to get paid for a single product service from multiple customers, best for groups of customers who pay for the same thing or a customer per who pays you regularly for the same amount. So, so now we have the link that can be used multiple times. You have to set it up in such a way if you're gonna be reusing the link for them to be paying you so that they're paying you for a, you would think a standard thing so that you can set the amount properly to have the amount that's going to be populated and what they're paying for systematically set up so let's start with the with the one-time payment link let's go next on it it says one-time payment link customize your payment link now you can edit the payment link url by adding your business name so your customer knows it's you so if you wanted to customize your link meaning you're giving them an actual link and you can possibly put your name in the URL, which would be snazzy. If you go into that, it says make your payment link uh, links your own. And it says uh, your customer will see your name and logo when they visit the link to pay you to change uh, changes to the logo and business name, go to the account settings. So edit your payment link so that you've got your link here and then it's got Tesco and so on 
on the left-hand side if you want to get into customization of the link. I'm not going to do that, however, so I'm going to click out of that and go into here again. And so next says your customer can pay you uh, with this link. Just tell us the payment amount, uh, what it's for and who you want to send it to. Don't worry, uh, this won't impact uh, any open invoices. So it's not going to impact an invoice. It's not going to be tied to uh, an invoice. You can see the video here to see how it works. Let's make the payment for $1. So what product or service is this for? So I'm gonna just put, uh, pro, let's say service one, generic service and the customer that we're going to be selecting here. Let's do this once again to J customer. Email address is gonna be necessary oftentimes uh, for the links, I believe. Uh, let's test that out. If I, if I choose a customer without a payment link, uh, choose the the way you want to get paid. So once again, you've got your cards and you've got the bank transfers. Notice here it says it won't let me go forward here because I don't have a customer with an email address. So I'm going to say, all right, let's choose a customer with an email address. And then it allows me to process forward. Now notice what is not included on this form that is included on an invoice is there's not a, a specific item. I, I said the product here, uh, what product or service, and I just kind of named it here. This is a text box, but it's not an actual service item field. So it's not like auto populating the, the dollar amount for the service item uh, and connecting it to the actual you know items that we would be setting up. So just note that we're gonna say, all right, send the link, let's send it out. So in addition to sharing via email, you can copy this link to send it in a text message. You can also display the link as a QR code so the customer can scan it and pay in person. So once you have the link here, you can copy the link and it's already been emailed out. You can now send it out uh, by phone or text or whatever you want to do. The QR code is listed over here. So customer can pay you by scanning this QR code with their smartphone. So if you've got that, if you're high tech enough to be scanning with a smartphone, then you can do that. So I'm going to say, all right, let's, that's done. And let's go back to my customers over here and see what happened in customer number J with that one. So notice that nothing has been populated here with, I don't see a sales receipt yet until they actually pay it. So it's a very short term type of thing we would expect once that happens that we're gonna see a sales receipt. So here's the actual email. So if we see the email, there we have it. We have the link here. So if I go into the link, it's gonna take us to the landing page. So whether the link was in the email or the phone or you sent them the link, however, once they click on the link, basically you're gonna to go to a landing page where they can pay you. They've got the payment options up top, which is the debit card, the credit card and the bank. Uh, with the links so then they can go through the payment process here for those options uh, Notice down here. I didn't point this out last time. It says save payment with uh, the, the faster future payment So of course they can save their account here and with the invoice They also had the ability to set the date that they wanted to pay it I believe so if they didn't want to pay it immediately They could still go in there and be proactive and set whatever date they want to set which you would think they would set like the last day of the due date of the invoice or something like that if they wanted to try to do that time management of money thing. All right, now jumping back over, it's been paid now. So now we're gonna say the payment happens and it processes quite quickly over here. And then if I go back into my customers, you see the sales receipt has now been generated. Now, so note what is happening. This, this is working more as a point of sale type of activity, not as an invoice. So if you send out the payment link and and they don't pay you quickly, you're not really tracking it in accounts receivable. So that's why you're not trying to use this link in this method in order to track the accounts receivable. If you're giving them some long period to pay you, you're saying, hey, I'm gonna send you the link and I'm hoping you pay me, I would, I'd like you to pay me right now. That's the design of the link. Otherwise you can use a payment, you can use a link that was created with the invoice to pay you that way, but you could still give them the link for the invoice. So here's the actual sales receipt that was created. Notice it's it's saying uh, that it's paid. So the, the sales receipt by its nature, when you create a sales receipt, it's gonna be paid 
at the point in time that it is created, which again is why it's not created. The sales receipt isn't created when you make the, 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 the payment link. It's created when the payment is actually paid because that's what a sales receipt means. It means we got paid for the work that was done at this point in time. So let's go into that uh, payment link. And so notice here that uh, it, here's our payment link that was created. So it looks like a normal uh, sales receipt that was created similar to an invoice, but instead of increasing accounts receivable, it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be payment received at the same point in time. And then down here, notice that it put that it was a service item as the item. So I don't believe we actually chose the item when we made the payment link. It just chose you know, the service item as we populated it here. And then down below, it gave us this auto-generated uh, sales receipt. So it just basically put it to service items here and then put the $1 in the amount as a kind of a generic amount. Because in other words, if I close this out, and I go to my balance sheet and run this. Now we have, uh, once again, that going into, if I go back on over here and uh, check it out, it's going, it's the payment is the credit card. If I close this back out and I go to my deposits, then it's uh, still batching on the deposit. Now I have four items that are batching on the deposit. Therefore, it didn't put it into the checking account yet. It's still processing and it put it into the payments to be deposited. So it put it into the payments to be deposited here for the dollar. Now, the thing I just want to point out, I'm going to go back, back to the first tab, is that, is that normally when I make an invoice or a sales receipt this way, you have the items that we're adding down here. Those are the items that we create. Now, if I set up a fixed amount, a dollar amount for an item, the, the item will populate over here by dollar amount. So if I made a new item, for example, and I said it was a, a test item, and then uh, flat rate uh, amount type, I'm gonna say, then I'm saying it costs like $5 uh, by item, by item let's say, then I'm going to say, okay, and close this out. Now, when I put the item on there, it's going to have that set price of $5. And so the item is what drives the, the amount that you're going to charge if you're using the items that way so that the data input is quite easy because your items already have the fixed amounts that you're going to charge per item in there. They also help you out with the tracking of the sales tax oftentimes. When we entered the links this way, leave without saving, I'm gonna say leave without saying, and we made the payment link. Notice we didn't, here's here's the payment links being tracked by the way, one-time link, uh, multiple links, here's the one-time link, it has been paid. So that's how you can, you could still kind of track it that way, which is kind of similar to tracking accounts receivable, but it's not going through uh, the accounts receivable account. But in any case, if I said uh, new payment link and I did the one-time payment thing and went over here, notice there's nothing here that really has the item in it. We just put a description down here and then it made just a basically like a generic item uh, for us. So so that's one thing that could be a pro and a con, pro or a con, how, however you think about it. It's flexible because you could just put the dollar amount here for a nice quick payment and then it creates like a generic sales receipt it looks like so let's do a, let's do another one uh and this time let's use the multi link just to play with that new payment link let's make it a multi payment so once again this works with multiple customers and can be used multiple times so now you can reuse the link which means of course you have to set a dollar amount that's going to be useful for multiple times so customize your payment now you can edit the payment link URL by adding your business name. So you can customize it still if you want, answer a few questions. So we're gonna have the dollar amount. Let's make this 150 this time. And then what product or service? Again, it's kind of generic. So we've got, pro, let's say service two. And then I am selling a product and delivering it after I get paid. So if it's a product, uh, you can check that off and then you have the estimated date of delivery. 
so you can put the delivery dates what this link uh, I want this link to just work once I create a one-time link so it's saying you could go back to do the one-time link notice that if I say it's a product in the United States it's more likely that it's it's subject to sales tax and I don't have the sales tax pop I haven't turned on uh, the sales tax uh, to, to have it to see if the sales tax would apply out in the link maybe I'll test that out later but let's keep that for now we'll say okay there's that and then I'm going to say the range is one to three days and so I'll say let's create the link and so there we have it so you can copy this link to share it in an email text or across your social your social uh, you can you can also display the link as a QR code and so on so here's the QR code now if I copy this link they can pay us basically multiple times right or we can have multiple payments for that amount so let's imagine for example if I open up a good old incognito window and just paste that link in here so there's there's the link so that's nice I mean you can even you can imagine having a reoccurring payment or or some something that you're selling on a website or something like that or and they have a, a payment link possibly even a donation link I don't know <laughs> that that would go directly uh directly here or something like that uh for a reoccurring payment and it shouldn't expire after the payment is done as we saw happens with the last one so now we can see the link populated down here service two no payments thus far and it is an active link even if we had a payment it would still be an active link whereas with the one-time link once it's paid it's no longer an active link and then if I go over here to the view tab it gives us the paid pending and uh, the information related to the payment and it's still pending meaning it recognizes that it's paid but we haven't deposited into the checking account at, at this time yet it has been processed by the credit card company to get it into our checking account